Hello everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creation. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I put together this Gable box order. I'm going to show you exactly step by step how I created these. Now there is multiple ways on creating this and there's also several softwares you can use. Now there's, like I said, there's several ways of people doing them. I'm just going to cover the Gable box. The Gable box was already made and I'm just going to cover it up with an image that I'm going to print out, right? So you're going to see how easy this is. And I'll, of course, I'll be using Silhouette Studio today, all right, guys? So let's get started. Okay, for your supplies, you're going to need your Gable boxes. You can find your Gable boxes anywhere or for choice, any craft store, Michael's, Joann's. Check out Tuesday morning, but I got these on Amazon. They come in different sizes. This one is six, six inches. Depending on what you're using them for, you can do you can get any sizes. Now, I'm going to be using the six inch, so my labels is going to fit this gable box. If you're using any other size, you're going to need your measuring tape to measure. I had to measure this one as well. Also, because this is a glossy gable box, I'll be using glossy paper so it can have the same look, but you don't have to use glossy paper. You can use cardstock or regular paper. It doesn't matter. Um, or the matte paper. And this one, I got it from Office Depot. It's 50 pounds and it's compatible with inkjet and laser. Remember, any paper that you use must be compatible with your printer. If you have an inkjet or a laser, you're going to need cardstock. Just because I'm going to be doing a 3D effect, again, you don't have to follow these steps. I'm just showing you exactly what I'll be using today in this video. When I have other orders of different type of gable boxes, I'll be showing you those as well. So I'll be using regular cardstock, 12 by 12, and I'll be using glitter cardstock as well. Now you can use glitter, you can use metallic, it's totally up to you. Your measuring tape, pair of scissors, because I want to do a 3D look, I'm going to be using pop dots. This is what you call pop dots, you can find it at any store as well. Also, Dollar Tree has them now, and at, if you go to Dollar Tree, if you go to the automobile um, section and the house section, they have these wall mount stickers, and I like to use these because they're bigger. If you see, and you get a big roll for $1. I'll be using this double-sided tape for the first time today. I have never used it. Comment down below if you ever used this tape before. This is the brand of tape that I love to use. Y'all see me use this tape in, uh, in different videos, but because I didn't want to be breaking tape today, I'm just going to use this one. Now, I do have a Scotch brand double-sided tape gun, but me and that gun are not friends because it just be breaking and I, it's hard for me to refill it. So, like I said, I got this pack, four in a pack. I think it was like $7 or $6 at Walmart. And that's all. So, let's get started. First thing you need to do is open up your software. I do have Silhouette Business Edition. I highly recommend getting Business Edition, but you can use this with either the Basic Edition or the Designer Edition. Basic Edition is free. You do not need to pay for it. But if you do want to upgrade to Business Edition, right now it is a one-time payment of $59.99. If you go to swingdesign.com, check down below for my affiliated link. Also, you do not need a cutting machine to use this software. All right, so the first thing you need to do is set up your paper size. On your right, there's going to be an icon that looks like a paper. Is the first icon. You're going to click on it where it says media size. Select the paper size that you'll be using. I'm going to be printing on 8 by 11, so that's the paper size that I have. Also, where it says transparency, I have mine on zero. Some people have it on 100, but I have mine on zero because I like to see my white paper that I'm working on. Prior to this video, I showed you guys how to make a cup template and I made it a movie theme so it's going to be the same design because this is for the same order all right so the gable box like I said I got it from Amazon and it's this one so I want to design the front the sides and the top okay you're gonna go to Google or Bing and you're going to go and look up movie PNG PNG means they have a transparent background so if you click on the image and once you click on the image, it's going to have gray and white squares behind it. That means those are a transparent background. You're going to right click and save that image to your computer. Also, I want a red and black background. So that's what I search red and black background in the one that I want it. I'm going to click on it, right click, 
copy the image go into silhouette right click and paste you do need um, to save your PNGs but you do not need to save your other images then I also want some curtain PNG so I'm gonna click on a curtain and I want it to be a transparent background that's why I looked for a PNG so it has gray and white rectangles I know that this is a transparent image I'm going to right click and save this and also I wanted a movie night background so I'm gonna click on it right click copy image go into silhouette right click and paste make sure you get all the images and everything that you need all right also you need to if you want to decorate the top of your gable box you're gonna have to go to google and search up gable box template click on images and then search for one specifically that has that on the top, that shape. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to right click, copy, go into silhouette, right click and paste. You might not be able to see it really good. I'm just going to extend it because the only thing I do need is that shape right there. All right, I'm going to show you how to cut that shape out. You're going to go, I'm going to zoom in. Where you zoom in and out is right here. There's a minus side and a plus sign, and that's how you zoom in and out. I'm going to get my knife tool from my left, hold down my shift key, and I'm going to cut right across it. Then I'm going to grab my knife tool again and cut diagonally here and keep repeating the same steps. When you want to cut straight, make sure you hold down the shift key. And I'm able to move this to the side. And I am going to delete all that. I do want to show you a quick tip. When you're using your tools on your left, as you can see, when I cut something with my knife, I can cut and my knife tool disappears. It goes back to the arrow. How do you have it like this? All the way on your right, you have the settings all the way at your right um, bottom corner. That is your preference. It has like a wheel. Click on there where it says tools and everything should have where it says choose to select. So after creating a shape, choose to select. After drawing, after using an eraser, after using a knife, have everything choose to select and click on apply and click on OK. All right. So now I'm going to give you the measurements that I'll be using for the gable box that I bought from Amazon. Remember, if your gable box is not the same size that I'm using, it's not going to be the correct size. All right. So just make sure that you measure where you're measuring tape. Like I said, this is going to go on the top of my gable box this shape right here okay i am going to turn this upside down i think let me make sure i look at it again yes like that all you i did was rotate that wheel holding down the shift key and i can color that any color i want if i go to my fill panel on my right i can just color that any color okay the measurements that I'll be using for this right here is going to be, so make sure my shape is selected, go where it says width. I'm going to type 6.13 and enter. And then on my height, I'm going to type 2.050 and enter. And this is um, my size that I'm going to be using. Now, the sides of um, my gable box, this side right here, the measurements that I'm going to be using for that is going to be, and actually this image is the image that I'm going to be using for that size. So the measurements for that one, I am going to use 3.5 in width and 3.25 in height. All right. If by any means uh, you don't have an image that you're going to be using and you just need to make a rectangle, just go on your left, click on the rectangle and make any size rectangle on your screen and then size it like that, okay? Which I do need to do that. 
So I'm gonna make a new size rectangle, make sure it's selected. I'm gonna uh, go on my width and I'm going to type 6.125 and enter. And my height is going to be 3.25 and enter. And that shape right here is the one that's going to go in the front. So I have a um, shape for here, shape for here, and shape for here. All right. Now, let's start with the shape that we're going to go put on top. I want this image that I grabbed from Google. And let me zoom in so y'all can see. So I'm going to click on my image and send it to the back just so it can be on the back. It was, but I just want to make sure I repeat myself every step because I know a lot of people are brand new in Silhouette and sometimes they get confused if I don't expect, explain everything correctly. So this is my shape. So my shape is in the front. My image is in the back. I'm going to place my shape where I want it. I'm going to click here somewhere on my screen. Make sure I leave it clicked. Drag my mouse to select the shape and the image. Go to my right where it says modify. My icon that says modify looks like a rectangle and a circle. And I'm going to click where it says crop. Now that design is cropped into my shape. Like I said before, I already had designed this comp template, so I'm going to be using those same PNGs there. I'm just going to ungroup all this. I want this film row, and as you can see, it's in the back. So I'm going to click on it, right click, and bring to the front. And this is just a PNG image that I grabbed on Google. And let me zoom in. And I don't know if you noticed in all my videos, right here this is the area where you set everything up to print but you are able to work all around silhouettes when you're ready to print and cut print or cut that's when you start placing your items here on your mat you don't need to you could just zoom out and you have all that space around to work all right so i am going to drag my mouse and select both. And I'm gonna go to my transform panel on my right. It's like three lines, it says transform. Where it says center, the first one is center to page and the second one is like center both items together. So I'm gonna click on center. So this could be right in the center. When you click on the image, you're gonna see white squares all around. So I am just going to drag this to make it thinner to fit my shape. I'm just going to leave it a little bit out so I can show you something. If you look closely at this, how it's cut, if I leave it right here, I'm not going to like it's not flush to my shape. So I'm actually going to extend it out. And I'm going to leave that one just like that. So I'm going to click somewhere here on my screen. I'm going to drag my mouse and select both. I'm going to go back to my modify panel. And I'm going to click on divide. Once I click on the divide, click somewhere else on your screen. Click on the extra that was out of my shape and click delete on your keyboard. Click on the other please. Click on delete on my keyboard. Now I'm going to drag my mouse over both. Right click and group this together. All right. I'm also wanting to add stars. I'm going to send this to the back. And these stars, I also got it from Google. I just looked um, in the same um, movie PNG, those stars were there. So I just saved some stars to my computer. All right, I'm going to leave this just like that. Drag my mouse, right click, and group it. And this is done. Now, this is going to be the side of my gable box. And now we need to design the front of the gable box. That's done. That's done. Now the front. I'm going to leave it black and how you color your items is you just click on your item, go to your fill panel that looks like a paint palette, color it any color of your choice. And if you don't have any colors that you like from here, click on the dropper that's there on your paint palette and you can come over to your design and put your mouse around what color you want and then click on it and your shape automatically changes that color. But I do want mine to black. 
Now I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to merge. And I want to click on the curtains. Click on OK. Select my curtains. And I'm going to resize my curtains the same size of my rectangle, which the width was 6.125 and enter. And then the height was 3.25 and enter. And let me zoom out because it went all the way down here. Now I'm just going to drag my mouse and select both. Go to my transform panel and click on center so they could both be centered. Going to right click and group these together. And again, all these PNG images, I grab them from Google or you can buy them from Etsy or anywhere else that you buy your images or get your images from. Now, if you see these images are going to go to the back, all I'm going to do is click on this, right click and send to the back. So this could be in the back. And my images are in the front. Start placing all your images where you want them to be. Again, this is depending on your design and what theme you are designing. I want to show you really quick how I did this. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I have Silhouette Business Edition version 4.4. The thing about version 4.4 is that when you bring in a PNG image, the images that are a transparent background, Silhouette automatically traces it for you. The benefit of that is, I don't know if you ever try to do a print and cut, and you might think like, well, my print and cut is not coming out normal because I have it's just cutting a box around my image. It's because when you save a PNG image, it looks like I have a transparent background, but it has an imaginary rectangle behind it. With version 4.4, it automatically traces that PNG for you. So if you're going to go and do a print and cut, it's already traced for you. And I hope I'm making sense. So when I went to file, went to merge, I saved this... Um, Film guys, I'm Spanish, so I know some of y'all be making fun of me like girl, you don't even know what these words are. A photo film or whatever photo, you know, this thing right here. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and rotate it so it can stay straight, like this. If you look closely, you see that it has a red outline around my image. That means it automatically traced this image for me because it was a PNG image. So if I click on it and go to my colors on my right, and I want this to be a gray color, so I'm gonna click on the dropper, and I'm gonna come over here and select this gray from right here. It turned gray for me already, as you can see. I do not want them red outlines, so I'm gonna go to my outline panel, and I'm going to click on the color, and click on the no color option because I don't want that red outline. So from here, I went and grabbed my knife tool, hold down my shift key, and then I cut straight down right here. Click on this part that I don't want and click on delete on my keyboard or backspace on my keyboard. And then I'm left with this. The customer sends me her images through my messenger on Facebook or if they send it through you to email, all you got to do is right click on the image and copy and paste here into Silhouette. Once I um, copy the images here into Silhouette, let me un uh, duplicate this one. And I do have permission to use these images in this video, I did ask the parent. You're going to size the images. As you can see, the image is in the front, so I'm gonna right click and send it to the back adjust it so it looks good on there after you add both images you're going to drag your mouse and group it together once it's grouped you're left with this and then you're going to size it to the size you want it to be and i want this to be right here which let me zoom in 
as you can see this is in front of my clapboard so i'm going to click on my clapboard right click and bring to the front so i can come to the front and let me move these glasses a little bit up all right and i also want to add some stars Once you're satisfied, drag your mouse over everything, right click and group it together. And now this is done. So I have all three designs that I'm going to be adding to my gable box. But I also want to, on top of my gable box, right here, I want to add a shape of a design right here. This is where the printing cut is going to come in. So I also grabbed this shape from Google. It is a PNG image, this one, right? Right here, I want to type that it says featuring seven's fourth birthday. And how do you type? You click on the A on your left, A on your right, click somewhere else and click on the font, click somewhere else on your screen. Hold on. Click somewhere else on your screen and start typing whatever you want to type. After you are done typing, you're going to click somewhere else on your screen to get off the edit mode. You're gonna go to your fill panel and click on the color that you want of your choice. You can also download free fonts from the font.com, but you need to make sure that your software is completely closed when you download your fonts because then you're not going to see it in silhouette, all right? Once you type everything you want it on your design adjust it to where you want it to be I'm gonna drag my mouse over everything right click and group it together I want a small white offset around this image so while my image is selected I'm gonna go to my offset panel that is the double star icon on my right click on the word offset and you're going to see and offset around it. You can play with your distance right here, in or out. I'm gonna go to my fill panel and click on the color white. Go to my outline color and click on no color. And then I'm going to drag my mouse over both, right click and group this together. Cause I actually want this to print just like this. So when my machine cuts it, it's cutting it out and it's going to have that white outline around it. But I also want two more offsets because I want to do a I want to layer this with two more different color cardstock. So again, while this is selected, I'm gonna go to my offset panel, click on offset. Again, play with the distance of your choice. And I'm going to go to my fill panel and click on the color red. Then I'm gonna go back to my offset, click on the offset button and go down on the distance. Again, the distance is your preference. And I'm going to color this yellow for now, but I'm gonna be cutting that out of gold. So now I have three layers. I'm going to print this out, and I'm going to cut this out of red cardstock, and I'm going to cut this out of gold cardstock. I'm gonna show you how to set up for a print and cut. You're gonna go to your paper icon on your right, click on it, you have three options so option number three right here is going to say registration marks click on and then where it says thickness have it all the way over to 1.00 and your registration marks are on now whatever you're going to print and cut you need to put on your mat everything that's outside of your red lines your machine is not going to cut it. Remember that. You're going to have to manually cut that out by hand. So make sure that your entire design stays within your red outline. Because my offset is white, I can barely see it where it's at. So I'm just going to go and color it red for right now just so I can see. And then I'll turn it off. I'm going to right click and duplicate. And I'm going to add as many as it fits in this page. Also, the measurements that you want this, you need to make sure that you measure how wide and how the, the width and the height that you want that to come up here. All right, you need to also measure that. So let me zoom out. I have everything here on the page. 
Now, because remember, I have the words, I have the image, and I have an offset around my entire image. Automatically, Silhouette is going to want to cut out the words, the design, and the offset. I'm going to show you that. So once you have everything there, go up here all the way on your right where it says send. Click on there. As you can see, everything here is going to turn red. Everything red is what the machine is going to want to cut. What you need to do is click somewhere here on your screen, drag your mouse to select everything. Here is going to say no cut, cut, and cut to edge. I'm going to select cut to edge. And as you can see, it's going to only cut on my edge. Then set up um, your settings. My car is like, sometimes I like to use blade six or seven, force of 28 to 30, and my speed I like either speed four or five. Then I'm gonna send that to cut, all right? You need to print this. How do you print? You're gonna click on your printer icon. You're gonna click on print. You're gonna select the printer that you're going to be printing on. I have an app. I just recently got an Ecotac 16600. So I'm gonna click on that printer. Then I'm gonna click on preferences. Make sure it's on portrait mode. I'm gonna print from the uh, back of the printer, which is the paper tray. Document size 8 by 11. The type that I like to print on is premium presentation paper mat. And click on OK and send this to print. I'm going to be printing on white cardstock. And the cardstock is 100. You could print on either 65 pound, 80 pound, or 100 pound. Today I'll be using a 100 pound cardstock. You don't need that. You can print on whatever um, pound cardstock of your choice. Once. You are done printing and cutting all this. I'm going to move everything to the side. You're going to go back to your paper icon on your right. Click on the third option right here and turn off your registration marks. Now, the first icon again, the paper, the first options. Remember where I told you to put 8 by 11 because that was the paper size that you're going to be printing on. Your media size, now you need to change it to 12 by 12 because that is the card stack that I'll be using to cut my offsets. So you just got to place one of your offsets there. Make sure it's selected. Go to your replicate icon on your right. And where it says filter page, click on it. And it's going to fill this up. You're going to go back to your send panel and cut all this out of how many pieces you need. Once you're done cutting all that, move it to the side. Do the same step with the other offset. Click on it. Filter page. Go to the send panel and cut all this out. All right, so now you're done cutting all those pieces out. You need to make sure you have it on 8 by 11 when you're going to print. And add all the images that you're going to be printing. I am going to be doing the images front and back on my gable boxes. So I need two of these. I need two of these. I'm just right click and duplicate. Then you go print this out. So you're going to go to your printer icon. Click on print. How many copies do you need? Um, I'm doing 12 um, gable boxes. So I'm going to click preferences. If it says copies, I'm going to click 12. Click on OK and print 12 copies. After I print that out, I still need to print the top of my gable box. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. Right click and duplicate and add as many as it fits. Do the same step, go to um, your printer icon and print them out. All right. Now, another thing, if you are just designing this for your customer and so is acting up right now, but I'm just going to talk while it, you see it loading. If you are just, if a customer contacts you and say, Hey, I just need you to design it for me and I'll print it and I'll add it myself. So how would you save this to sell it to a customer? You're going to add your designs to the page. So I will add one of these, one of these, and one of this one. If you have business edition, hold on guys, I have to charge my laptop. 
if you have business edition, you are able to save as a JPEG, as a PNG, as a PDF, and as a SVG. If you are selling this or if you are printing somewhere else because you don't have a printer at home, you need to make sure you save this as a PDF file, guys. That is very important. The reason why you are saving this as a PDF file is because not everyone has the same software as you. Not everyone has the same software, I mean, uh, um, font as you. So you need to make sure that nothing changes in the sizes. Like, let's say right now, I size all these images to the correct size to fit the gable box. If you do not save it as a PDF, the measurements are going to change, guys. So if you're going to sell this or you're going to print somewhere else, and then once you get home, you're going to be like, oh, wow, this doesn't even fit my gable box. You need to make sure you save it as a PDF file. So if you do have business edition, you go to file, you go to save as, save to hard drive, click where it says save as type, and click portable document format, short for, I mean, long for PDF, all right? So you need to make sure you do that, guys. Don't forget that step. If you only have basic edition or designer, I have a, I have a whole separate tutorial on how to save this as a PDF file if you don't have business edition. So check down below for the description in the description bar as well. But guys, I highly recommend you just getting business edition. I know some people say like, wow, that costs $59 or $100, but it's a one-time payment. I know a lot of people have Microsoft Word and you're paying monthly or yearly for that. This is a one-time payment and you're going to make that money up right away, okay? So, all right, guys, I'm going to print all this out. I'm going to cut everything out and then I'll be right back gluing everything to the gable box. I did forget to say while I was cutting out all the pieces that I did cut out two pieces of each offset just so I can double up my pieces so it can be thicker. So I cut out 24 pieces of the back offset, 24 pieces of the middle offset just so I can double it up.
all right guys here is the final result on how the gable boxes turned out thank you so much if you watch this video all the way to the end i really really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed yet feel free to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video i'm trying my best to give you at least one video a week i'm noticing that what works for me is if i record my orders and i could have some content out for you guys if you haven't subscribed yet please feel free to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video if you would like to order anything from me feel free to follow me on facebook and instagram and message me through there and if you don't have no social media feel free to email me at andrinascreations at yahoo.com if you do try these gable boxes out i would love to see a picture it doesn't matter if it's your first time or your hundredth time doing a, um, a gable box Feel free to join my crafting group. It is called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. You can post any of your crafts. You can ask me questions. I'm usually very active on Facebook. So if you don't see me on YouTube, I'm over on Facebook. Okay, everybody. I hope everyone's having a blessed day. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.